In this video, I will review 17 productivity habits that all Linux experts share. The first habit involves using a shortcut to quickly type the last argument of the last command. For example, let's review a case where you need to type a very long file or path name multiple times in the same terminal session. In this example, we need to make a copy of a file and then edit the copy. After running the copy command, most Linux noobs would probably carefully type out the entire file name again. The faster way to accomplish this would be to press and hold the ALT key followed by the period key, which automatically pastes the last argument of the last command for us. Depending on your keyboard configuration and version of Linux, you may have to substitute the ALT key with a different key depending on what your system treats as the meta key. The meta key can also be configurable. The component of Linux that implements this functionality is called readline. You can type man readline and then browse the fairly confusing documentation to learn about the different shortcuts that readline offers you in a command line environment. Another functionality of readline will allow you to jump to the start or end of the current command that you're typing. Consider a case where you're trying to commit some of your code changes and you type the following commit message only to realize that you've forgotten to type the word git at the start of your command. In this situation, many people would consider using the arrow keys to slowly and painfully move the cursor all the way back to the start of the command so they can type the word git. Instead, you can just hold the control key followed by the A key to immediately move the cursor to the start of the line. One of the most common things you'll need to do as a Linux expert is be able to quickly read files and raw data. This can be accomplished by editors, but occasionally you'll encounter use cases where editors don't work. For example, if you have a huge file of many gigabytes, editors may crash or work slowly when attempting to view these files. That's why you'll want to use the less command for these applications. Less is also useful whenever you want to briefly capture and view the output of a command or shell pipe. By piping the output of a command into less, you can read through it and then discard the output, all without needing to create temporary files. grep is a general purpose command that can be used to search for matching text in files, but its true power comes from the fact that it can be used in so many different contexts. If you're using grep right, you'll probably find that you use it many times per day to find matching files in a repository, matching variable names in your code, or filtering out log statements from your web server. Another thing that Linux experts do frequently is use command line editors. The two most popular editors are Vim and Emacs. Nano is another command line editor that is more friendly for beginners. There are several reasons why experts prefer command line editors. First, they're very low on memory usage compared to graphical editors like Eclipse, Sublime Text, or Atom. For example, my copy of Vim is currently using 62 megabytes, whereas graphical editors usually need to use hundreds of megabytes or even gigabytes, especially when projects are loaded. Another important reason to use command line editors is to allow for easier editing of files on remote computers. It is possible to remotely use graphical editors, but this always requires a faster connection and more bandwidth. It also requires more careful security habits when securing your remote system. Many programmers only ever need to edit files locally, but for Linux system administrators, they may spend their entire careers working remotely on other computers. Most people know about man pages in Linux, but only experts frequently use them. This is because man pages can be hard to navigate if you haven't yet heard of the trick that I discuss in number 8 of this video. It's worth emphasizing that there are man pages on nearly everything. In fact, you can probably think of any Linux term, and if you type man something, you'll probably get a man page for it. This includes more than just commands, but also many built-in C functions too. For example, man printf man socket, man mem copy, man ls, man man. A great tip is to type man followed by the first few characters of something that you think might have a man page, then tap the tab key. Whenever you need to view or edit a file, the most common place you'll need to navigate to is at the end of the file. For files with many lines of text, it can be time consuming to jump down one line or screen at a time. Fortunately, there's a keyboard shortcut to jump directly to the end of the file using Shift plus G. This feature works in a variety of editors and contexts, such as Vim, Less, and Man Pages. Often, you'll find yourself needing to change between two directories that both have very long path names. 
an inexperienced Linux user would probably just deal with retyping path names over and over each time. However, the pros know that whenever you need to go back to the last directory you're in, you can just type cd space dash. To achieve a similar result and go back even further, you can use the pushd and popd commands. The pushd command can be used just as you would use the cd command to navigate to a different directory. When you want to go back, instead of using cd, just type popd to go back to the most recent directory you were in when you issued the pushd command. This feature uses a stack to keep track of directories, so you can use it for deeply nested navigation. One of the most important things you can do as a Linux expert is master regular expressions. Regular expressions are usually written inside the context of another programming language or editor. For this reason, the exact regular expression syntax and behavior can be slightly different depending on the context in which they're written. Although there are many different flavors of regular expressions, most of them have remarkably similar syntax and behavior. This list shows a brief overview of the most commonly used regular expression features. They can be very useful when you need to make bulk changes to source code that happens to obey very specific patterns. Let's assume we are in the process of refactoring the function do stuff, which appears everywhere in our code in the following form. In our case, we want to refactor every call to this function to pass the first and last arguments into another function first, and then pass the result of that function into the do stuff function as the second parameter. In other words, for our final result, every call to the function do stuff that looks like this would turn into this. We can use the following regex based replacement to accomplish this in Vim. Depending on how many instances of this function are in your code, you might suggest that it would be faster and easier to make all the changes manually. However, the biggest benefit of using a regex replacement for this situation is that your result is more likely to be completely perfect or completely broken. A completely broken result is more likely to be noticed and corrected immediately, whereas a manually manipulated result with a few subtle errors can last undetected for a very long time. Let's assume that we really did make a mistake in this case, and that we actually wanted to use the first and second arguments instead of the first and the third. We can simply press the U key in Vim to undo all of the changes. Then, instead of retyping the entire regex again, simply press the up arrow key to bring back the most recent replacement. You can then quickly adjust the argument numbers and immediately reapply the corrected regex in only a few seconds. In this code change example, we have assumed that the function do stuff is never called with arguments that are also function calls. If this were the case, the specific regex shown here wouldn't work and we'd have to use a different approach to matching the arguments. It's worth pointing out that one of the biggest issues that keeps people from using regular expressions is not related to the difficulty of regular expressions themselves. Instead, it's usually the difficulty of knowing all the escaping rules of the enclosing language. Experts don't have time to carefully read every word of man pages or log files. That's why they use the slash character to enter search mode and find what they're looking for immediately. For example, it's easy to forget which command line flag for grep is used to indicate that file names should be printed before matches. Instead of rereading the entire man page, you can type man grep and then press the forward slash character to enter search mode. Then type the word file name and press enter. This highlights the word file name everywhere and automatically scrolls down to the first occurrence of the word file name in this man page. You can see that the first match of the search has scrolled down to exactly the information we want to see. Here, it is evident that the command line flag we're looking for is dash capital H. If we had typed the word file instead of file name, there would be many more irrelevant matches before the one we want. In this case, you can press the N key, which stands for next, to immediately jump to the next match. In order to move as fast as possible, consider spamming the N key as fast as you can. Don't worry if you accidentally jump past the text you want, because holding the shift key while pressing N will cause you to move back up to the previous match. This way, you can completely handle navigating up and down the man page just by searching for something that you know will be above or below your current position in the text. This feature can be used in many different contexts, including man pages, less, vim, and git log. This is because programs like man pages and git actually use less as their text pager. When you type man something and start scrolling down, you're actually interacting with the less program, not man. If you don't believe me, open a man page or type git log. 
Then press H and you'll be greeted by the documentation for the LESS program. The FIND command is extremely useful for doing a quick assay of a particular part of a file system. A common and simple use case for the FIND command occurs after cloning a repository or unzipping an archive. In this situation, you'll wonder, how many files are here and where is everything? To answer this question quickly, just run FIND space dot. If the output includes way too many files to be meaningful, you can pipe the output into less and use the slash search functionality that was just discussed to search for something you might be interested in. The find command allows you to specify a search pattern too. Note that it's possible to get subtly incorrect results if you forget the quotes and allow the asterisk character to expand in the shell. A better way to filter out names is by piping the result of find into grep. Finally, you can use the find command to execute arbitrary shell commands against anything that matches your search pattern. For example, here is a command that will find all files under the current directory that have the JPG extension and print out the width and height of each image. One of the best reasons to learn how to use the command line is so you can automate all of your work. The upfront work of figuring out how to do something with a command is often much greater than it would be to just use a graphical interface for the same function. However, if you can figure out how to do something with a command once, you can then do it thousands of times automatically without supervision. This is why Linux experts will always carefully save their commands when doing something for the first time. They know that the next time this task comes up, the saved commands can be refactored into a script that does everything automatically. For example, here's a quick demo of a situation where we want to name images with time and dimension information. After some research, we can come up with this command to obtain the image dimensions and the following command to show the current date and time. Now we can use this command to manually rename our file. Since we have all the individual steps now, the process can be automated by placing these commands inside a script that takes the image name as an argument. To automate what we just did, you can simply copy the above commands into a file and then add the execute permission. The script can then be run like this. In Linux, every directory has two special entries which appear as one and two periods. You can just treat them as though they were any other regular subdirectory. You can use the ls command to see that the inode number of the dot directory has the same inode number as the current directory. Also, the dot dot directory has the same inode number as its parent directory. The only difference is, the dot entry acts as though it were a hard link to whatever the current directory is and the dot dot directory acts as though it were a hard link to the parent directory. Effectively, they act as shortcuts in the file system. Most people have seen these two special entries used in the following cases. But many people are unaware that the following examples have meaningful interpretations as well. A significant number of new programmers don't use any form of source control. They prefer to share zipped files by email or using services like Dropbox, which is not ideal for source code. All expert Linux users use at least one form of source control to keep track of their code changes, or in some cases other types of files as well. The most commonly used form of source control is called Git. If you don't know what Git is, you should drop everything you're doing right now and learn it immediately. Often, you'll find that you need to type a very long, hard to remember command. If you can only remember a small part of the command, you can automatically bring it up by holding the control key followed by the R key, then typing the substring that appears in your command. Once the command you want appears in the search feature, pressing the enter key will immediately run the full command without you needing to type the rest of it. If you want to change the command slightly before you run it, you can press one of the right or left arrow keys to get back to the normal command line prompt, but with the full command pasted and still editable. For even quicker repetition or correction of commands, experts frequently use the up arrow key to manually search through recent previous commands. This is especially useful when you type a long command but accidentally include a small mistake that causes it not to run. If you miss the command you want, you can also press the down arrow key to cycle back in the other direction. The most important feature that Linux experts use is called tab completion. While you're typing commands, the shell detects when you press the tab key and attempts to automatically complete the rest of the command by checking which valid possibilities exist. For example, when you're typing the following, if you press the tab key, 
you'll see two options for downloads and documents, since these are the only two valid options for completing this command. If you type one additional character, and then press the tab key again, the command is no longer ambiguous, so the word downloads will be typed out since there is no other valid option. Tab autocompletion can be surprisingly sophisticated. For example, it can work even when specifying arguments that involve files on other computers over an SSH connection, such as with SCP copy commands. Tab completion will also work with many programs that have nothing to do with directories, such as the IP command or man pages. If you see someone you love struggling to type long file names by hand, please talk to them about tab completion.